me share with you my terminal again. There we go, we're back. All right, so environment variables. Um, you've noticed we've had these built-ins, um, sort of when I say built-in, I mean that dollar uh, sign one is something that is set for you from an argument. Um, dollar sign hash is something that is set for you from the number of arguments. You don't have to do anything. Those are always like, you know, something built for you under the hood. Um, similarly, when you log into when you log into Matrix, uh, there are certain variables set for you, you know, by Bash itself. Um, so, for example, if I echo user over here, what you'll see is um, it's returning back my username. Uh, this is the username that I'm logged in as, um, and I didn't really have to do anything to set that up. It's just set for me. So we got environment variables and uh, we can use them for a lot of different things. So let me show you one thing we can do with it. I'm going to open something called simple home. And when I run this, you'll get back this output. Hello, Eric, you must be lost. Use CD tilde to get back home. Okay, that's weird. Let me show you what's inside this script. So I'm gonna just type in vim simple home. We'll have a look at it. Uh, this is an example where we look at um, a whole bunch of environment variables. So the first thing that you see over here is echo user, hello user. Um, and then we have an if statement over here. And we have a couple of more environment variables. We have something called PWD, which hopefully you understand maybe what that's going to do. It's going to have a similar output to uh, print working directory exactly the same and we have a, a variable called home and what that would be is your home directory so the same you know the same um, it has the same contents as just the tilde okay so if your current if your current working directory is your home it's going to echo welcome home if your current working directory is not home, if this condition is false, then we skip over lines eight and nine, go to line 10, echo you might be lost, use cd tilde to get back home. And then that's basically it. That's the end of the script. Okay, so it's nice. You don't have to query the user like, please enter your current directory right now and we'll tell you something. Um, these are sort of convenient things that you can work with. If you want to see all of them, here's what you do. Uh, there is a command called env, and env stands for environment. When you run this, you will see a collection of every single environment variable that's set up for you right now. So we have a whole bunch of things. We have Ruby version over here, which is used if you're running Ruby sort of um, stuff. Uh, log name, home. So here's our home uh, variable right here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's mail and there's path and all kinds of things. You don't, you don't need to know any of these. Um, however, there is one that you're going to be working with in assignment three. It's part of the assignment. That is the path. So I'm just going to clear all this because I'm not really interested in it. Uh, I'm just going to echo path. And so what is this? Well, this is basically a whitelist um, of all the directories where you can have um, executables. Um, so this is a whitelist of all the places uh, where we search for things. So I'm going to show you on my home machine. I'm just going to open up a new session over here. So this is on my local machine. And uh, I'm just going to go and very quickly create uh, pizza dot, pizza dot sh. And I'm going to give it a shebang really quickly. 
bin bash, and I'm just going to echo uh, pizza is a meal, something like that. Okay, so very similar to our very, very first example, you know, uh, about an hour ago or so. And let's go ahead and make sure that this is executable. There we go. LS-L pizza.sh. Right, there we go. So I'm going to try to run this. And so what happens when I do something like this is the first thing that I have here is always going to be a command or an executable or something. And the shell is going to find this. It's going to see this file name over here. It's going to be searching in each path, each of the whitelisted directories, and it's going to be searching for an executable that I have permission to run that is named pizza.sh. And in this condition, in this situation, um, it's going to return pizza command not found. Okay, well that's weird because it's right there. It's in our current location. It's in our current directory. So why can't we find it? Well, let me look at echo. Let's echo path on this machine and see how it's different. So on my machine, uh, some of the acceptable places where I could have an executable is under slash snap bin, user local games, uh, user games uh, slash bin. So we've talked about slash bin before. This is where all the core utilities are, right? Like ls, cat, rm, mv, cp. All of these are in a directory called slash bin. Okay. So when you type in ls, the shell is searching inside path for a file called ls or mv or something like that. It does find it inside slash bin and so you're able to run this. However, when we search through here, when we are searching, let's do this. echo path and let's try grepping for our PWD. So we see some things as uh, it's like Ruby environment, shims, home, eric, slash local, slash bin, but we're not seeing anything in the actual current location right now. You know, some of the subdirectories are allowed in the whitelist, but not actually where I am. Okay, so you can see this is what we're looking at, but um, that's not what we're that's not what we're getting. So, basically, what I'm trying to point out is my current location is not in the whitelist. So then, any try to, any scripts I have here are not going to be able to run. Now, there's three ways around this. What I could do is I could copy pizza.sh, and I could move this. I could, you know, create a copy under slash bin or something like that. So I could make a copy of this uh, script and put it into one of the whitelisted directories. That's option one. I could change my path so that um, path is going to be appended with my current location. So something like this. Sorry. That's fine. That's not going to be persistent. Um, this is the actually the approach that you're going to be asked to take in assignment number three, because um, you're going to be asked to open .bash rc and basically add something like this into it, so that every time you run it, um, the the path is modified. However, uh, if you're reading through Stack Overflow and things like that, you might encounter this other solution. Um, and what we do basically here is override path with the dot slash. So dot, you remember, means current location. Dot slash here, and then we just type in pizza.sh. And we're actually able to run this. Okay. Now this is not going to be an issue for you guys because I'll show you. This is our path 
on matrix and you'll notice one thing is over here um, dot is already part of your path so you've already whitelisted your current location no matter where you are so all of your scripts no matter where they are they should always be you know able to run this is not common practice if you are on any other Linux machine this will not be there and you will have command not found errors if you try to run things okay I don't know why they made this change I'm not for it it's not a good idea the takeaway from this is basically guys um, don't worry about it for this course but once you're using Linux in any other environment use dot slash to override path okay and that's all I'm gonna say about that so let's move on uh, I was talking about environment variables I'm gonna talk about exit codes now so exit codes are very seems to be tricky for a lot of students and I'm not really sure why that is but uh, I'm gonna try to cover it I'm gonna try to show you what's going on here so let's go back to one of my previous example let's go back to simple if else and you'll notice in this sort of situation so I have the condition here and then if the condition is true we go to line 6 we go from line 6 down to line 7 line 8 we stop when we encounter that else keyword if the condition is false we skip over this we reach the else and then we take these lines we run these lines line 10 line 11 and then we get to the 5 there's nothing there and so once we have exited from the if statement we just continue running this script line by line so we get to line 13 line 14 okay when I run this this is what we get back we can see action is true action one open the script in vim or nano and change the value of condition okay now in a couple of minutes I'm gonna show you another script and we're gonna see how the behavior has changed in that script but um, right now I'm gonna take a moment away from that what I'm really trying to do is just clear my screen so I want to take a moment and talk about how the shell is behaving um, let's talk let's uh, do something like this um, here's my current location I've got pizza, I got pasta and stuff like that. So I'm going to run a normal command like copy. And I'm going to copy pizza and I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to create a copy of it called uh, pepperoni pizza. Okay. This is an example of a successful command. We get no output back the uh, shell doesn't communicate anything to us we can use ls and we can verify that there's a new thing called pepperoni pizza here so this was success right um, now if we try something else if we try to copy um, if we try to copy giraffe to a new thing called giraffe 2 we're going to get an error message this is written to our standard error and it basically tells us uh, we cannot continue because the target that you specify does not exist there's no such thing as giraffe here okay so we have success and we have failure the user usually sees success as being no output and sees a failure as some sort of error message the shell sees things differently the shell is not looking at this output the shell is looking at uh, a different kind of output and it's always there we just don't usually read it as human beings okay so these are exit codes and the exit code indicates a success or a failure so I just ran this copy command and the copy command failed what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another command to um, read the exit code from that 
So I'm going to go and echo dollar sign question mark. Okay? Dollar sign question mark contains the exit code of the last command you just ran. So I'm going to run this and I get back a 1. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run uh, copy pizza and I'm going to copy that to pizza 2. This one was success. I'm going to read the exit code from this command as well. And we can see that there's a 0. So here's a convention that we have in Linux. And that is 0 equals success and non-zero equals failure. Usually it's a one, but it doesn't have to be one, right? So zero is success and non-zero is failure. And this works with everything. Um, all the core utilities are returning something like this. So let me go ahead and cat uh, hello.sh. So you can see that this is the contents of hello.sh. This is success. How do we know it's success? We can just read this and we get back zero. However, if I'm going and trying to cat a file that doesn't exist like grapefruit, we see an error message here, but we can also see an error message here. The error message here is one, okay? So, with me so far, you can think about all of these different um, programs that we run, cat, ls, rm, they're all sort of like functions. We can pass in arguments and we get a return, okay? We get a return value. The return value here is just usually indicating if things went well or if they didn't go well. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm going to do now is show you simple exit codes and we're going to see how we can implement this in our scripts. Okay, so let's start at the very top here. Um, start with the shebang because we always do. Um, the next thing that we're doing is we're just uh, printing a little bit of a message to the user. Is everything all right? Yes or no? We are using read again and the read is going to take that user input and store it in a new variable called response, okay? So the next thing we do is we're gonna look inside that variable response. And if the contents of response are a Y, then we're gonna echo good to here. However, if the response is anything other than just the lowercase Y, we're going to skip that, we're going to get to the else, and we're going to get to the sounds like an error message. And notice that on line 10 and line 13, we have exit. And um, for me, exit zero is success. It should be for you too, it's a good convention to follow. Exit zero is success. And failure can be, well, it doesn't, it's up to me actually, I can choose any number. It doesn't have to be one. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is just change it to, uh, what's the date today, 20th? Exit 20, okay? As soon as the shell encounters exit, it's going to stop. It's going to halt. Um, the shell is no longer going to run this script. We're going to be exiting from there, and going to, we're going to be returning this as the exit code. And so what you'll see is that on line 16, we're never going to reach this line because we've we've stopped the we've we've canceled the program we've terminated the program as soon as we encounter exit okay so I'm gonna save this let's go ahead and run this again um, or run it for the first time rather is everything all right the answer is pandemic it's not really no okay sounds like an error Let's go ahead and use this dollar sign question mark and let's go ahead and read the error code. You can see here the error code is 20, which is what we decided on in our script. Okay. 
So these are really up to you. You can name them whenever you like. Um, conventionally, you see lots of ones and zeros. Let me show you another way that we can work with exit codes. So um, this time, I'm not looking at my own script. I'm going to be working with grep. Okay. You guys remember cars, hopefully. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you this example again with grep. I'm going to show you with uh, Toyota. So I'm going to run this, and we get back some results with Toyota. Uh, we get back two lines, so there's positive matches. Let's, um, let's check the uh, exit code from grep when this happens. Okay, so we get back a zero. Now I'm going to compare that to running this again. I'm going to be grepping for... Um, Lambo. We're going to be searching for Lambo in this file. And we're going to notice that we got back no output whatsoever um, because there are no lines that contain this pattern. Now an interesting thing we can do here is we can read the echo and you'll notice that we're getting back a 1 here. So grep is special in that um, the exit code is able to tell you if there's a match or if there's not a match. And uh, what we can basically do is run grep and then be using exit codes in an if statement and just see if things were successful or not. Okay? So as part of the phone uh, script in assignment number three, they might be asking you to uh, return an, uh, a message for the user, right? It's basically using grep, and you're grepping inside a file called PhoneBook, and you are uh, grepping for Cheryl or Joel or something like that. But uh, one of the one of the um, uh, requirements of the script is that um, you print out a sorry somebody is not in the cars file or the the, the phone book. Um, Use exit codes, use the exit code returned from grep and see what you get back. Um, so that's one way that you might want to solve that problem, okay? Okay, so that should do it for exit codes. Hopefully that's clear. If not, go back to the lecture notes and see. Um, I had a little bit more detail in the lecture notes, um, but uh, I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk quickly about a couple more topics and then we can wrap it up. So let's go to scripts again and I'm going to show you a way of checking for files. So Bash is a great tool for working with files. Um, it's a great tool for changing, um, for basically maintenance of servers and stuff like that, uh, removing files, backing files up, deploying things, building things. It's not the tool that you would use to do any kind of math, um, but um, to be checking the, like, the existence of files and stuff like that is actually very, very easy. So let me show you one way that we can work with that. I'm going to show you a simple file. Okay, so I'm going to start from the very beginning again. So here's Shebang. Um, what did we? One of the things I do over here is I'm grabbing the first argument from the user, that's dollar sign one, and I am assigning that value to a named variable called file in question. So the reason I'm doing this is um, because file in question is a little more descriptive than just dollar sign one. Okay, so this makes a, your script a little bit easier to read. The next thing I'm doing is I'm going to use the uh, if statement over here to be checking if the user has entered uh, a single argument or not. So I want this script to be run with only a single argument. If the user, if the number of arguments is anything other than one, if it's not one, that's what the exclamation mark here means, 
If it's not one, then we're going to echo this usage message and just basically say, please enter only an argument, and we're going to exit. And you can notice here that I'm using exit one to indicate failure, which is generally the convention. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, so this is me. This is any normal user. You have a script over here, and it's supposed to do something. So we're just going to run it. And we can see that um, it's asking us for a, only one argument. So OK, we'll come back to that. But let's move on. So assuming that we have given it an, a single argument over here, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at that argument. We're going to be checking that. And if there is a file that exists with that name, um, then this condition over here is going to be true. So the dash f over here basically returns true if this is a file that exists. Okay, so um, if this is true, then we're going to print off this message. Otherwise, we're going to print off these messages over here. And you'll notice that I'm doing touch over here. Okay, so that's one of the first commands that you learned. And here I am using it in a script. Okay, so let's run simple file again. We'll call it um, grapefruit. Okay, so this uh, script is very intelligent. It can tell that grapefruit doesn't exist, but it creates it for us. So now we've got something called grapefruit. And the next time I run this, um, it can tell me that it already exists. So an example of this might be um, if you are creating a configuration file in an installation script. Uh, you do not want to overwrite an installation file that's already there. Or maybe you do, but you might want to be checking if something exists before you create a new version of it. Okay? Um, I'm only going to ask you to remember the dash F for file to check if a file exists or not or the dash D to see if a directory exists or not. But there's a lot more options. You can check for permissions. You can check if a size is zero or not and stuff like that. Okay. And last thing is math. So let's take a look at math. This is how you would do math inside a bash script. What I've done here is I've created a variable called x and another variable called y. I know that's not very creative, but there you go. Um, if you have something like this, if you're just saying echo the value of x and the value of y, you're just going to get back 10 plus 5. It's not going to do math for you. Everything here is understood to be just strings and not sort of... Um, numerical values. To make it work properly, use a dollar sign, the two brackets, the two round brackets here, and then inside these you can do whatever math you like. Okay? So you can see when I run this, it's doing the math for me. It's returning 15, which is, you know, the sum of 5 plus 10 obviously. And another thing I want to point out is usually if you're doing number comparisons over here you can see so the result is 15 and if the result is less than 20 then this condition is true then we want to print off a message like this. Usually what you would do in any other programming language you would be using you know like uh, something like this right if that result is less than 20. For whatever reason doesn't work in bash okay so instead of that we use something like LT for less than less than or equal to greater than greater than or equal to or just something like EQ for equal to okay so if I change this over here I can make it something like this 